Good morning. I'd like to just start out by reading some scripture this morning. I'm in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, we're going to start toward the beginning of the chapter. Uh, this is where Jesus teaches about prayer. And in verse 5, let's begin. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Rather than go into the Lord's Prayer, which starts at the next verse, I just wanted to teach you what I've been learning and what I know about this from practical experience. You see, many times we say we have a relationship with God, that we are close to Him. And while theologically that's correct, practically we haven't really talked with Him. You see, many times when we go to pray, We focus on the act of prayer rather than focusing on God. The difficult thing is in the United States, we are so pulled by all the busyness that we feel wrong by just sitting and and speaking into the air, so to speak. And so when we pray, it's very difficult for, I think, Americans. I think this is one of the most difficult cultures in which to actually pray. To get alone and be quiet. No interruptions, no cell phones, maybe even no music. And just be in stillness and silence. And you go, oh, Eric, that sounds so ritualistic. That's not about ritual. What it's about is just slowing yourself down and focusing on him. The whole point of the Sabbath and keeping the Sabbath was to take one day a week and honor God with it. Prayer is very similar like that. We are slowing everything down. We are shutting everything out. And you and I, when we go into our quiet place, we are with God. How do I know that? Because his word just said that. That if we go and in secret, he rewards us. What does he reward us with? His presence. Him. He's the reward. He's the greatest reward you will ever have. He's the greatest reward you will ever receive. And so when we go into prayer, don't focus on the act. Focus on Him. Spending time with Him. Being with Him. Well, Eric, that sounds great, you might say. But it just seems like I'm just sitting there talking into the air. You're focusing on the act. Focus on Him. Talk to Him. Talk to Him about where you're at. Talk to Him about what you're going through. At least begin to speak it out with your own voice. Don't just sit there and think, because if you just sit there and try to think prayer, you start to do the... the. Yeah, because why? We are so busy. We go, go, go. And when we stop and take time, we get maybe bored, where's instant gratification. We're used to, when we want to zone out, putting something on our phone or on the TV or noise in the background. But this is, a, in some ways, a discipline. This is a something that you and I are missing and lacking until you actually do it and you are in his presence and you start to go, Father, this is how my day is going. This is where my life's at. I know you know this, but I'm just stating it anyway for the record. (laughs) Or you're just saying, I'm just, I'm just confessing it to you. You know, that confess isn't about guilt. You know, oh, I'm confessing that I did something wrong. No, sometimes confession is just simply saying out loud what's going on in the internal parts. Because so many times in our prayer life, we have an outside world that we put forward for everybody else, but our inside world is so full of turmoil, turmoil. That when we go to him, it's very difficult. You know, that word intimacy, um, let me just break it down. It, it's like into me see. Um, 
it's like uh, it's like burying yourself. I had a friend David, and I uh, just taught me this great understanding as a pastor. Eric, we don't pray to be seen, but we must be seen praying. And it's very hard because the man in me that wants to get the recognition wants to be seen doing the godly thing. But the truth is, I just want to be with Jesus. There is something about my prayer times that when I actually connect with him, what do you mean actually connect? There are times when you don't connect? Yeah. Why? Because my head is so full of garbage. My head's so full of this or that. I'm concerned. I panic about this. Oh, the church is going to fall apart. Oh, or the church is going to take off without me and I'm not going to know what to do. Oh, this. No, it slows me down. And I just say, Father, you're in heaven. And you love me so much. And I thank you for that. And I worship you. I do worship you. I worship you because you are the only one who knows me completely and loves me. You're the one who sees into me and you find me a value. And I pour myself out before him and just thank him that he loves me in spite of my temper, in spite of my coarse joking at times in spite of my so horrible thoughts I have on this and that, my willing to give up, my panic, my look at me, I'm doing good, my showboating. And he loves me. And it's the same with you. He loves you. Again, I want that word love to be like a mighty shield soldier I want you to understand how powerful his love is. How amazing his love is. So that we aren't so busy with life and focusing on the act of prayer that we choose to be with him. And then the other part of that verse, it goes, when you go in there, don't just continue to babble on. But empty your heart. Now you may go, well, Eric, that's babble. I get it feels like that, but the babble he's talking about is saying, Oh Lord, come Lord, I pray Lord that you would Lord come. And, and it's like it's like when we were writing papers and we had to get up to a certain word count, so we're filling in extra things in there. Again, don't focus on the act, focus on him. Focus on talking with him. Father, this child you gave me, it's going to be the death of me. No. Because I've learned lessons that I can be just like that child to him. This is why we call him our father in heaven. Because he has that right over us. And we are instantly connected with him. But let's not be practically far away.